In this video, we're going to be looking at Lab 5 and 6, Part 1, Separating a Mixture. In this lab, we're going to be taking a mixture and separating it into its components. So the mixture that we're going to be looking at is going to consist of three different compounds, silicon dioxide, sodium chloride, and calcium carbonate. We're going to separate these three compounds based off of their solubilities. So if the compound is insoluble, that means it does not dissolve. If the compound is soluble, that means that it does dissolve in the median. So we're going to use the solubilities to separate. So for silicon dioxide, it is insoluble, so it does not dissolve in either water or hydrochloric acid. Sodium chloride is soluble in both water and hydrochloric acid, so that means it will dissolve in water. Calcium carbonate is insoluble in water, so it will not dissolve. However, if HCl is added, hydrochloric acid, it's going to react with HCl, and it's going to react according to the equation below. So if we take solid calcium carbonate, so this little s after the compound represents that is a solid. If we react that with HCl, hydrochloric acid, if we add hydrochloric acid to that solid, what we're going to see is bubbles. So what are those bubbles? Well, the bubbles going to the reaction side of the equation is CO2 gas, one of the products. So CO2 with a G by it because it's a gas. So what are the other products that are going to result from adding hydrochloric acid to calcium carbonate? Well, we're going to get water as a byproduct, which is a liquid, and we're going to get calcium chloride. Now notice calcium chloride has this AQ symbol by it. That AQ symbol stands for aqueous, which means that calcium chloride is dissolved or soluble in the water. So it will not be in solid form anymore. So we're going to use these characteristics of these three solids to separate them. So before the separation, we're going to get two beakers and we are going to take the mass of each of those beakers. Noticed in the picture also, they are clearly labeled as beaker one and beaker two. So on page 39 of your lab manual, you will want to fill in these masses. Make sure that you include the units as well, grams. Now for the data collection. So before the separation, we take a mixture of unknown quantities, unknown percentages, that contains silicon dioxide, sodium chloride, and calcium carbonate. So we're going to set beaker one on the balance and add approximately three grams of the unknown. So when beaker one has the unknown in it, the total mass of the beaker with the solid in it is 67.448 grams. Now notice on your data sheet, the next fill in the blank says mass of sample, and there's an empty space there. So how do you figure out the mass of the sample? Well, you have mass of beaker one with the sample in it, and before you put the sample in it, you also have the mass of beaker one by itself with nothing in it. So in order to figure out the total mass of the sample, you subtract those two numbers. That way you're taking out the mass of the beaker and you're left with just the mass of the sample. Make sure you are using sig figs. So when you're doing subtraction, you always look at the decimal places. So notice there are three decimal places in both masses given that you are subtracting. So you should go out three decimal places for the mass of the sample as well. Also, remember your units in grams. Next, the filter paper is also masked at 0.938 grams, a piece of aluminum foil, which we'll be using later on in the experiment at 0.456 grams, and then a watch glass 
at 38.252 grams. So fill that data into your table for before separation as well. So next what we're going to do is we're going to take beaker one that contains the silicon dioxide, sodium chloride, and calcium carbonate mixture, and we're going to add 50 milliliters of deionized water to it. So you can see in the picture to the left, there is a graduated cylinder with 50 milliliters of water. We're not actually taking the volume of water and re recording it anywhere. So at this step, we add the water to the beaker with the solid in it and stir. Stir for about five minutes and then let it sit. So the reason that we're adding the water, stirring it, is because we're trying to get one of the compounds in the mixture to dissolve. Because one of those three compounds is soluble in water and the other two are not. So by stirring it around, we're just ensuring that we're getting all of the compound that we want dissolved and the other two not. So once we're done stirring, we let the beaker sit. We let the solids that are still present, so the two compounds that were insoluble in water, um, settle to the bottom so that we can decant the liquid into this gravity filtration setup to the right. So now for the gravity filtration. So to do that, we're decanting the liquid from beaker one through the filter paper. So by decanting, what that means is you're trying to pour off just the liquid and not get any solid on it. The reason for this is so that you're not clogging the filter paper. Because if you put the solid in there first, it's going to get clogged and the gravity filtration is going to take much, much longer. We want to allow the liquid water to pass through without um, solid present. Once we get most of the water decanted, we then use a small amount of water um, to transfer all of the solid onto the filter paper. To aid in this, we use a rubber policeman um, and a little extra DI water. Once all the water has drained through, we now have um, the water in beaker two. So that's the reason we weighed beaker two. And this isn't just water, because one of those three compounds silicon dioxide, sodium chloride, and calcium carbonate, one of those are soluble in water. So this isn't just water, we also have one of those compounds in there. And to figure out that compound, you'll look at the solubilities. So whichever one's soluble, that's what we have in the water. So we now have one of the compounds completely isolated in water. The other two compounds are solids trapped in the filter paper. So this is the step where we are adding the 3 molar HCl to the contents in the funnel on the filter paper. And if you listen close, you can probably even hear the bubbling. You'll probably even see some of it because if there is CO2 being released as the HCl is added. So the HCl is dissolving one of the components making it soluble so that it is dripping down into beaker one. So let's look as we add more of the HCO. You can see close up the CO2 being released. So I'll add the rest of this 10 mils once all the liquid has transferred down into beaker one. We will collect whatever solid is left on the filter paper and dry that in the oven as well. Here we have the contents of beaker two. So 
that 50 mils of DI water um, that we originally stirred our solution with and then the extra 20 mils um, to help us rinse and filter for the gravity filtration set. So we are taking that and heating it up. What we're trying to do is boil off all the water. So you can see we have a piece of tin foil on the top with a hole in it, which we have the mass of. So the reason for that piece of tin foil is, as you can see how vigorous it's boiling. We don't want any of the solid that we're trying to get to pop out of the top as it's boiling. So that piece of tin foil will catch um, any debris trying to pop out of the beaker. Um, that's why we took the mass of the tin foil as well, because once we get to about half the volume, we will place this beaker with the tin foil on it in the oven uh, to get the rest of the water off. Um, and then when we get back next week, I'll take the mass of it and we will know the mass of the solid in beaker two that is soluble in water.